Howard, do you want a refill? asked James. Looking up at me from the mini bar, sure. I could use a refill, I replied already. Slurring the little damn, it's still only. 30 in the afternoon, and I'm already. Slurring my words. Whatever it had been six months since. James's daughters. Wedding Madison was a beautiful bride as. Was her partner Sarah, I still remember. That night, well, most of it anyway. Because I'd had a lot to drink. I remember James walking her down the aisle and thinking of his little girl. Clarissa said that he never got to walk. Her down the aisle time had not healed my wounds only. D.E.D. them a little we were sitting in the main salon of my yacht. Purgatory, I'm pretty sure I'd already had at least three of his famous beach pineapple drinks and was quickly heading towards full intoxication as I should be. So how are things going with you and Tanya, I asked, redirecting my thoughts. Great, I think we're actually really well suited for each other our professions. Aside honestly, if I'd met her when I was 20, we'd be together instead of Caitlin. And I, that's great, my friend, but she would have been what for I roared loudly. Unable to contain my laughter, James nodded with a thoughtful look right so how's retirement treating? You tired of lazing around on your little yet yet small all I asked. Somewhat indignant, it's a yacht over 140. F.T. Long. Sir James immediately started laughing. That laugh that comes from deep in your stomach and nearly flipped him in two. Damn it, he caught me again, would he? Never get tired of getting a reaction. Out of me, I pulled myself together and said, Well played, sir, and then, Hiccup, shall we have a drink now? It took James a moment to get his laughter under control, then he brought me a tall glass with more of that wonderful juice mixture in. It the thought flashed through my mind that this stuff might be worth the money the light bulb hadn't come on yet. But the filament was already starting to heat up at that moment there was a sound. Outside James jumped up and walked over to the sliding back door that must be. Tanya she said she'd join us after the run into town. And he stepped out and I heard them whisper their declarations of love to each other before entering the parlor. Holding hands it was almost disgusting how in love they seemed I was happy for them. But I couldn't help but feel bitter too. He said James when the hell are you going to put a ring on her I asked. Clearly riddled with social lubrication Tanya blushed slightly and James just smiled, perhaps I should tone it down since it was still only noon that sir is none of your business. But she's worth the wait, he replied with. A wide grin, Tanya glowed at his words and hugged his arm. Tightly the two of them continued to puzzle me, but it didn't really matter. I was just glad my buddy was happy. I remembered what it felt like to be Happy once upon a time I had a family that loved me too or so I thought now all I had were these clowns if only they knew. James damn it give me a drink I barked. Hold your horses old man he laughed back. By then used to my antics I just hummed and walked towards him well waddling. Would be a better description anyway I made it to the bar and snatched my drink from him I tipped it back and set the glass back down enjoying the way it burned my throat I don't think I've ever heard how you two met Tanya remarked I mean I met James after you so you both know how it happened well Tanya you see I began this old man came up to me at the bar and hit on me James added I felt an angry heat flare up on my cheeks until I realized he was mocking me again I'm going to kill him someday damn you 
James at that moment he laughed in A. Smirk appeared on Tanya's beautiful face. The heat faded away as I looked at her. When the laughter subsided I continued like I said we met right after. He arrived in that resort. Lounge I told him about my problems at the time and he ended up laughing at the top of his lungs James added. Indignantly, oh, I'm sure I would have. Laughed too, Tanya replied, smirking again. Rolling my eyes, I continued so after he told me the heartwarming story I gave him the phone number of someone who would help him find a place to live. He moved to a that little boat, I said suddenly, confused about what I was talking about. I really needed to drink less, I must. Have been so damn tired because I passed. Out next. Chapter the sun rose on the horizon and. The light woke me up my head hurt my. Stomach felt like a grenade had exploded. And my back hurt from sleeping on the. Couch again I really needed to drink. Less. Somehow I made it to my quarters and. Immediately stripped down to take a. Shower the hot water began to work like tonic magic on me as I washed drying myself off I brushed my teeth popped a couple of Advil pills and down a glass of water shaking my head I looked in the mirror and I didn't like what I saw I looked more tired than I had ever looked before my demons were catching up with me at that moment I heard some noise on the AF deck naturally I put put on my sandals and went to see who was there. Good morning Howard shouted James the first. Flinch grabbing my head damn man keep it down. Okay he just smiled and walked towards me I turned and waved for him to follow me into the house we walked to the parlor and sat on the couches next to each other I groaned as my stomach rumbled loudly how you haven't eaten yet asked james actually just woke up i couldn't lie to so why bother what made you get up so early besides making sure you were still alive oh and it's almost noon i wouldn't call it early he teased me i hated him oh don't look at me like that you no i'm just messing with you james said in all seriousness i just saw Something that made me think of you, so I came over right now to talk about what I was thinking about. I just threw him a hurry, the up kind of look our favorite hangout is. For sale, he added this was news to me. We used to frequent the same place on the beach, and we often ate light bar food and drank. There, James and I often good-naturedly grumbled about the elderly owner and his wife they ran the place together but for them it was more just a semi-retirement occupation than an income it was my favorite place to spend time aside from my at hm was all i was capable of howard i think we should buy it we could share it as equal partners what do you say i think i'll go back to bed seriously i don't want it to close and this gives us a chance to make it the Way we like it, he exclaimed James, what the hell do we know about running a pub? James didn't answer immediately. He stood up and left the saloon returning with a sandwich on a plate and a bottle of water. He handed me two more Advil and water. I took the pills, chugged them with water and picked up the plate. You really should hire people to. Help you run this big beast, he commented. Your galley is a mess, he laughed, reveying in his own pun. He's still a big dumbass, I just groaned at this misplaced humor, but had to agree that a little staffing wouldn't hurt at the moment for now, I shelved the idea for. Later right now, he was talking about us. Buying a bar together, what the hell, why? Not. Okay, James, let's do it, I said for some reason he was immensely happy and I wasn't going to stop him from enjoying 
the moment when he stopped acting like a little schoolgirl before prom he pulled out his cell phone and tapped the screen. After a few seconds he got the answer he was hoping for so Tanya just told them. We'd like to buy it he announced I was shocked what you left it there on your way your damn dude what's the rush James. Ignored my grumbling and continued we need to start planning your big day we definitely won't be celebrating. My coming of age no we will you're one of my closest friends Howard and there's no way I'm letting you drink an entire bottle of 18 year old scotch by yourself damn he knew my 70th birthday plan I hated him how the hell did I get so old next chapter June 1967 I was 20 years old and spending summers at our family cabin on the lake Sure, I was moonlighting as a lifeguard at a local church camp just to have something to do for fun. My parents were wealthy, so I didn't have to worry about money. My father had gotten rich in oil by discovering a huge oil field under his parents' property. Not that I was raised with a silver spoon, but by the time I was in middle school, he had already made his fortune and then some. The time I spent at camp was great. Although it allowed me to be a little irresponsible, I just enjoyed the summer. As any other young red-blooded American, mail with the days were filled with sun. Water and girls, the evenings were filled with campfires, beer, and good friends. I really miss those easy times that summer I met the woman of my dreams. Her name was Ellen, and she was just an angel she worked at a camp too. One of the counselors for the kids every week we had a new batch of kids to entertain that summer we had a fairy tale romance a whirlwind escapade of warm summer nights spent on the beach under a moonlit sky she understood me in a way no one had before she teased me that I was rich and that I made all the ladies Swoon I told her she was making it all up, but needless to say I was delighted we had spent as many years together as we could and weren't looking for to going back to school in the fall. We would be art and there wasn't much we could do about it. We promised we would wait for each other and we waited summer and vacations were too short, but we made the most of our time. Together she truly was my better. Half after graduation I proposed to her. And she said yes with Misty. Eyes to this day I don't know what she saw in me but in that moment I was grateful for it years later I wished I hadn't remembered it. My parents helped us with the down payment on our first house and while they were still loaded we had to find our own way my father wasn't the type to just hand out money in his opinion every man or woman should earn their own I had a lot of respect for my father we were on our way to our dream Ellen became pregnant and gave birth to our beautiful baby girl Clarissa she became the second angel in my life and we adored her everything was good Ellen stayed home with the baby quitting her job as a telephone switchboard operator we discussed it and at this point she just wanted to stay home with our girl I supported her no matter what she decided we also talked about having more children but it never seemed to happen we were happy and life was good for what seemed like a very long time when Clarissa was about 10 years old I was promoted to head of the local office of my company I was working as a middle manager at an auto parts plant one of several throughout the state with the promotion I got a new office and even a secretary true she turned out to be more of an assistant but the title administrative assistant was not yet widely 
used her name was Candace and she was a red fox she was married no children at home and her husband worked on oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico she often joked about her husband the gruff Kyle and his work schedule he would be gone for weeks at a time and when he was home she would tell me about their active life meanwhile at home Ellen and I were doing well but we never got back to the passion we had before Clarissa came along we should go on a date tonight I said to Ellen one Friday night oh how what about Clarissa I really liked it when she called me Howie well can't we get a babysitter or something can't your parents watch her overnight on such short notice can't we wait until she goes to bed and watch a movie or something that was my life it was good but at the same time it seemed stale I felt the need to be more alive to enjoy life to the fullest the following Monday over a cup of coffee I told Candace about my disappointing weekend I just don't get it we used to have such a great life and now it's like a chore for her I lamented Friday night Kyle and I had a big fight about his work schedule I want him around more often even if it means we have to take a pay cut but he doesn't want to hear about it she replied it's been really chilly in our house all weekend sorry to hear that I replied not knowing what else to say we continued our office romance for almost two years before it all fell apart that was Wednesday and I'll never forget that I called Ellen in the morning telling her I'd be an hour late but I'd be there in time for lunch she had been tired a lot lately and I advised her to go to the doctor she said she had to be home in time to make dinner and I would ask her about the visit when I got there but I never had that opportunity it was about five o'clock and my door was closed again Candace was lying with me when my wife burst into the room there was a confused look on her face for a second and then all hell broke loose Candace jumped up panicked and ran for the door Ellen only threw me a strange look the pain in her eyes at that moment nearly killed me there was nothing I could say or do to return the pain I had cost her today Ellen was holding some papers that had fallen to the floor she turned and silently walked out without saying a word I walked over to the papers and found that there were some forms from the doctor's office I couldn't understand what they meant but I couldn't help but notice the word biopsy written and circled on the page life became very hard and there was no more joy in our home Ellen was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer and she didn't want to touch me we argued for a while but eventually she just gave up she lost the will to fight and it was my fault I tried to reason with her even begging her to kick me out if that was what it took to get her into treatment nothing I could say to her could bring back her spark my selfish actions led to this and she died a few months after that horrible Wednesday afternoon my daughter didn't know all the details but she knew that I had cheated causing her mother a lot of pain she was furious at me for hurting Ellen and when cancer took her away from us I lost my little girl she and I talked to each other but only when necessary she looked depressed all the time and no amount of coaxing for me helped her that's how we lived together until she graduated from high school she packed up and left the first week of summer while I was at work next chapter one haven't spoken to my daughter since she left I eventually tracked her down it took several private investigators in almost two years of time when I found her she was living in 
California with her then-fiancé S.E. Glenn. The private investigator's report said he was a nice guy working in the movie industry on some prop building crew. Earth to Howard James shouted, I snapped. Out of my ray shock that I'd been so distracted, James looked at me. Impatiently tapping his foot, I asked you if you could join me to sign the papers. Right now, yes, of course, lead and go, I replied. Fortunately, the drive only took a few minutes. It was 80 degrees outside a nice warm breeze was blowing and gentle waves were splashing on the beach. The day was perfect as it always is James and I sat at the bar while the outgoing owner gave us a detailed tour of the establishment. He laid out a few papers with financial statements as well as existing contracts with food and beverage vendors. Honestly, I let James handle most of it. I looked at the water and realized it was perfect. My friend had convinced me to put down roots even if it was just a T.I.Y. hut-like bar on the beach, I would still live on a yacht, but I would enjoy the rest of my life. Here I looked at James, he was smiling, shaking the salesman's hand, it would be good for him too, he had a hard time. Before he came here, what's more, he'd had a hard time after he got here, the whole ex-wife thing, the plane crash and the storm, I was beginning to think he was a cat with nine lives, or maybe he was just good at life like McGiver. He was in love with Tanya, though. That much was obvious. I think he was a little jittery after what his ex-wife had done to him, but overall they seemed like a happy couple. I was glad to see them enjoying each other's company as they both meant a lot to me. James was like the son I Never had I could have had more children. If I hadn't screwed up so badly and cancer hadn't taken my love, everything would have been so different. Howard yelled James again, damn it. Are you back on earth yet? He asked laughing. Yes, sorry, just daydreaming. What did you say? You've been doing that a lot lately. Are you okay? Just tired. Sorry. I replied. Unconvincingly, I was trying to tell you that it's your turn to sign if you still want to do it. He stated I cleared my throat and nodded. Yeah, I still want to. Where do I sign again? He pointed to a line on the last page and I put my best. John Hancock's signature I was capable of. When we finished signing Jeff, the outgoing owner showed us around. He jokingly introduced us to another. Employee who was working at the time. Kelly. Peterson, we had visited the place many times before, so we knew most of the employees and considered them friends in addition to Kelly. There were two other employees, Samantha Montgomery, who helped serve the bar in the evenings and Jacob Paulson, who was in the kitchen during lunch and dinner. Jeff's wife, Patricia. Often stopped by the restaurant too. Kelly guessed what I asked jokingly. Oh my. God, Howard knelt when she moaned back. I chuckled. Kelly was one of my favorites. She always knew how to take a and immediately fight. Back, honey, you work for me. Now she had a huffed look on her face and lowered her forehead onto her. Hands of Jeff, how could you in the World James came to her rescue. Hey, Kelly. Don't listen to that old fool. He's only a co-owner. Great. So now I have two pervy old bosses. She asked, lifting her head from the bar and laughing. I can't. When can I? I heard James asked his hurt look lasted about 10 seconds after which he and I broke out into a friendly laughter running this place with James. Is going to be a lot of fun. He really has become a lot like the son I never had in many ways. Kelly, could you be a doll and make James and I eat a beach pineapple? Please, I asked, are we going to have to 
Add that to the official drink menu now. She asked, well, we need an official. Drinks menu first, James added laughing. Jeff was always too good for. That Jeff didn't comment on anything but. Gave James a middle finger salute eye. Always like Jeff guess we should give. It a new name, huh? I remarked what this. Unofficial drink, I thought you already. Called it the Beach Pineapple Kelly. Asked no silly the bar I can't imagine. James and I running an establishment. Called Jeff Shack, how about you James? Would you like to run Jeff's? Shack I know thinks you see we need a new. Name does anyone have any ideas I asked. Kelly groaned and Jeff just laughed you. Guys are idiots you're the old beach bum. And that one over there she pointed at. James is just a lucky. Guy at this point Tanya walked over and. Gave James a hug she acted as if they. Had been separated for a whole year the. Way she snuggled up to him in a way I. Was happy for them but at the same time. I felt a deep sadness at the daily. Reminder of what I had. Lost naturally I tipped the rest of my. Drink into myself and stood up where do. You think you're going Howard Tanya. Asked asked Tanya asked Tanya I just got. Here I grumbled unhappily but obediently. Sat back down that woman was quite a. Piece of. Work James was a very lucky man and I. Felt lucky to have such good. Friends I think you guys should name it. After Howard Tanya said what a bar named. After Howard that sounds stupid I. Replied no it should be Beach Bum she. Said laughing I think we should vote for. It all in favor of Beach Bum asked James. To the group everyone Jeff raised there. Hands he raised his hands when James. Threw a hard stare at him what he said. We going to retire from here I say the. Name sounds great but it doesn't really. Matter what I. Think I'm flattered I muttered I still. Find it funny that you think I'm a. Slacker I. Laughed okay shall we stay with Beach. Bum then asked James Howard how did you. End up in Hawaii anyway I don't think. I've ever heard that story said. James Natur James turned the vote into a. Story sometimes I hate James most of the. Time okay as long as I'm not sober we. Get along just. Fine why do you think I drink so much I. Replied I really didn't feel like. Talking about it see now you have to. Tell us said Kelly very. Excited knowing my friends they would. How me until I told them another. Story let's just say I've had a lot of. Bad and I've decided to put it all. Behind me nope you're not getting off. That easy James. Teased fine but don't say I didn't warn. You next chapter after I lost my wife. And my daughter practically abandoned me. I found myself in an emotionless CI. Worked eight slept and did it all over. Again weekends went pretty much the same. Except for Sunday on that day I would go. To the nearest church and pray for. Forgiveness I wasn't a very religious. Person but I felt I owed it to Ellen. There was no way I could make up for the. Terrible things I had done no way I. Could atone for my. Since sitting in the pew I experienced no. Spiritual enlightenment but continued to. Go there out of some perverted sense of. Duty the only thing I got out of it was. A constant feeling of. Guilt I couldn't stop blaming myself for. My sweet Ellen giving in. About a year after Clarissa moved out I. Hit rock bottom my parents were always. Upset whenever I was around and still. Blame me for ruining a beautiful family. My daughter never got in touch with them. Either or if she did they never told me. About it I know they loved me but the. Few times I talked to my mom on the. Phone it was always the. Same. Frustration mom I was thinking about. Coming to visit you for Thanksgiving. This year I tried one cold October. Evening. 
Well, I guess we could cook a turkey or something together. It's just too bad. You'll be alone again, she replied sadly. I know, believe me, I know you know I'd give anything to have it all back, don't. You there was silence in the receiver. For a moment. Mama Sniffle was heard, yes, honey, I'm here, I just missed. Then the phone went off, I could swear I heard her start to sob before hanging up. This was my life, I had a daughter who didn't want to see me anymore, and parents who couldn't talk to me anymore. I was a constant reminder to them of everything I had messed up, I ended up moving in with them, and over the course of a year we came to an understanding I had screwed up, and we all knew it, but we had to get on with our lives by then my daughter was being sought by two private investigation firms I wasn't going to get involved in her life but I loved her too much to just forget about her they first tracked her to a college in California but apparently she dropped out after her first semester it was another full year before they found anything else she got pregnant and dropped out to become a mother I was a grandfather after reading their printed report I drank my glass and made another in no time at all I was drunk here I was a 43 year old widower and now I was a grandparent I was one once again overcome with longing for the family I no longer had I became addicted to the bottle I only had a few friends at the time their names were James and Glenn Fitt, McAllen and of course Jim and Jack in the evenings at the bar next chapter so did you talk to her Kelly asked now very interested in my story I sighed yeah I talked to her after I found out she had a B maybe I wanted to try again but I knew that before I tried I'd have to clean up my act that meant no more drinking James laughed we all know how that turned out he continued with a smile pointing to the filled glass in front of me you sir I said laughing along with him after a minute everyone calmed down I decided enough was enough and tried to sober up I went to my doctor and they referred me to rehab his nurse at the time was a beautiful woman named Catherine to make a long story short I asked her out and she said yes now I know you're full of there's no way a pretty nurse would agree to go out with you Tanya laughed joining the conversation yeah it happens every day right agreed Kelly seriously she was very beautiful and after a year of Dating she became my wife, I love that. Woman unconditionally, I rep replied. Calmly everyone stopped laughing and in. Eerie silence descended upon us this was. Where my story was to continue it was. Time to end the. Confession next chapter that doctors. Visit turned out to be one of the most. Important moments in my. Life the doctor gave me several recommendations for programs I could enroll in and also advised me to see a psychologist about my personal problems most importantly I found the courage to ask Catherine out and she said yes I hadn't been with a woman since I last went out with Candace so long ago after being exposed my now vanished wife never returned to my Bed Candace decided to quit and take a job at another company. Honestly, it wasn't that I missed having fun, although I had that too, but rather that I hadn't been intimate with anyone in a very long time. I remember, remember our second date when we were sitting in a nice Italian restaurant talking about our life. So do you prefer to be called how or how are she asked? Me oh tough questions huh, I replied okay. Let's put it this way, I prefer to be. Called Howard, but my close friends used. To call me ho used to she asked. 
catching my wording long story what? About you I tried to look away she. Glared at me me okay I'll leave it at. That for now but eventually you'll tell. Me the. Story fair enough I reassured her I. Really didn't want to scare her off too. Quickly I prefer to be called Katie. Catherine sounds too formal like a nanny. From the. 1920s I still scold my parents for. That you're too pretty to be a stuffy. Old nanny I tease she blushed thanks. You don't look too bad yourself she. Smiled. That night we did it I fell in love with. Her and eventually by our fourth date. She did get the whole long story out of. Me I was in tears when I confessed my. Passed to her for the first time in years. I felt connected to someone again I. Proposed to her and she said yes we got. Married and enjoyed every minute we. Spent together she told me about her. Childhood overbearing parents and. Tumultuous college days as a nurse Katie. Worked crazy hours but we made it work. We discussed it many times but at our. Age we weren't interested in having. Kids she loved kids and sometimes worked. With them at work she tried to help me. In my endeavor to reunite with Clarissa. But it wasn't meant to be when. Clarissa's daughter was about two years. Old I felt I had mended enough to try to. Contact her. Again it was the most nerve wracking. Time I could ever. Remember I sent her a long letter trying. To explain how upset I was about letting. Her and her mother down like that I. Tried to tell her that I wanted to be a. Part of her life again and I still loved. Her very. Much by this point I had created my own. Little shrine to her in a spare room in. The house and Katie was helping me with. The. Collage about a month after I sent my. Letter I received a reply she sent me a. Very succinct letter that I still have. In a box I can still see the tear stains. On the paper some of them were mine and. Some were obviously left before the. Letter was. Said I know you were my father but I. Wonder if I ever really knew you when I. Was growing up you were always there to. Pick me up in times of need I counted on. You to be there for me after everything. That happened who was I supposed to turn. To for help you that's what you took. For me you took my father away from me. I miss him no 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 if you love me even. A little bit you'll never contact me. Again next chapter. Wow I'm so sorry Howard James. Said I could tell by the look in his. Eyes that he understood my. Pain yeah the one thing I wanted more. That anything in my life never happened. On top of that it was right before my. Dad had a stroke and was placed in a. Nursing home he couldn't take care of. Himself anymore and my mom was getting. Two. Old then I talked to my mom and at least. We came to an understanding she finally. Realized that it was was partly her own. Fault that we weren't close anymore I. Mean I know it was my fault for cheating. On my wife but my mom apologized for not. Being there for me her son it was a very. Difficult time in my. Life okay before you go any further. Everyone needs a fresh batch of stiff. Drink Sean exclaimed loudly as he. Approached. Us everyone broke into laughter due to. The fact that Sean was always present. In the group he was a friend of James A. Mechanic and had followed him to the. Island sometime A.G. Go Sean and I became fast friends. Except for the fact that he liked. Kentucky. Bourbon I had long ago forgiven him for. His terrible. Taste Kelly served the drinks and Sean. Wood behind the bar and made his own. Bourbon on the rocks lots of bourbon in. A beer mug I like Sean A. Lot as he stepped back to leave behind. The bar he went behind Kelly and grabbed. Her hips as he passed her careful Sean. 
My boyfriend might have to kick your ass. She warned. Laughing, yeah, I'll be sure to watch out. For that, he replied, leaning over her. Shoulder to kiss her, so this one guy was. Hitting on me at the bar, she. Joked everyone laughed knowing that. Kelly and Sean had been together for. Almost a month by then, initially these. Two seemed like a very unlikely couple. But it worked out for them, and amazingly. So, however, that's another story for. Another. Time I cleared my throat and continued. Getting everyone's attention. Again later that year my father had. Another stroke he didn't survive the. Second attack and it just crushed my. Mother she and I talked at the funeral. And I realized that she was going to. Follow him very soon she wasn't. Physically ill but you could tell her. Will to live had faded they really. Weren't a bad couple I said staring into. The void on the mirrored wall behind the bar. Next chapter on Thanksgiving Day before. My dad had his stroke Katie and I drove. Over to my mom and dad's house we had a. Nice dinner and I enjoyed the feeling of. Having family again Howard Kathy Weir. So glad you're both here mom said thank. You it means a lot to me too Kathy said. My parents are probably somewhere in. Central Montana right now, Kathy's. Parents are enjoying their retirement in. An RV, I explained. Dad started to. Chuckle, that's what I keep threatening. Your mom with, but she's adamant that. We're not going. Anywhere mom just looked at him and they. Both giggled at some personal joke, Dad. Took mom's hand and they shared a quick. Kiss on the. Lips, they always did things like that. Even when I was a little boy after. Everything that had happened, it was nice. To see it. Again, Katie and I looked over at each. Other and imitating our parents' parents. Kiss next. Chapter that was the last time we. Enjoyed a meal together after that dad. Had his first stroke and we never got. Together as a family again until the. Funeral, so what happened after the funeral, what happened to Katie James? Asked pointing out the obvious, I was no longer married that my boy is another long story. Let's get something to eat first. I asked. Kelly and Jeff took over the small kitchen and we had an impromptu fish fry. The fish was lightly seasoned in batter. Fried coleslaw they had hash browns and Fries on the side and sliced fresh Honeydew melon we had another portion Each and the fish was excellent filling My empty stomach we should make this a Weekly event don't you think asked James That's actually not a bad idea agreed Tanya I know I'd love It then it settled announced James everyone was enjoying their food and drinks, but I knew I would have to. Finish my story soon, I tried to remember. Where I left off next chapter, my mom. Died just a few months after my dad, I. Was taking their loss hard and was head. Over heels in my work a week after my. Mom died, my parents' attorney, and I sat. Down to discuss their. Inheritance as an only child I had. Inherited almost everything from them. They had set us aside 10% of their estate to be used to establish a college. Fund and the name the rest went to me. I was already earning pretty good money. But after receiving the inheritance, I didn't have to worry about money anymore. The net amount after taxes and paying off all debts was just under $112. Million dollars I had no idea they were that. Rich suddenly Kathy and I were multimillionaires and we had a long conversation about our future she confessed that although she loved her job she didn't want to work anymore instead Katie decided to volunteer at a charitable organization for homeless and low income 
families this place was truly amazing and what it did for these poor people Kathy was really able to make a difference in people's lives and if it made her happy it made me happy too she was such a good person that I was proud to be her husband a few months after I got the money I started to hold down a job and was ready to retire eventually I took my wife's advice and set up a college fund for Clarissa we had a lawyer friend draft a formal letter stating that it was an inheritance from her grandparents of course my name was not mentioned this began my silent help to her and her family I don't know exactly at what point things took a turn for the worse but I do remember that Kathy and I began to socialize less with each other she spent more time with her new socialite friends she became more involved in the charity organization she was volunteering for it got to the point where she was selected for a leadership position I was very proud of her but it ended up taking up a lot of her time when she had to go out of town for charity events I traveled with her as often as I could there were a few times when I didn't go for various reasons at those times I had no reason to worry about anything next chapter on one of those trips I found out that my wife was having an affair I said several sighs followed as I continued I was stuck in the past again but the problem I was dealing with resolved itself very quickly cliche I no but I went to surprise her and caught them in the act of details aren't important but suffice it to say it was the end of our marriage money really ruined the beautiful person she once was after a moment's silence all James could say was wow I continued so she broke my heart and I had to leave she was seeing a young guy on the side and had the nerve to tell me that he was better strong and could last longer than me when the divorce was final she got two million of my inheritance but the rest was left to me my parents asked us both to sign a prenup given their wealth I was against it at first but Kathy ironically agreed I'm sure when we first met she never thought she do what she did so you're saying that money made her cheat John declared no I'm saying that all the money ended up ruining her she was no longer the kind and gentle woman I fell in love with I was just too blind at the time to notice that she's changed and I blame it on the money I replied with some anger in my voice okay okay I get it John said raising his hands in defeat it's just that I had my own memories anyway I was traveling for a while nothing could distract me from thinking about losing her I bought the purgatory when I felt I needed to get far away I chartered a carriage to take me around the world and after about two years I ended up here I finished there was an awkward silence and then I heard the clinking of glass I looked over at James who was grinning like a fool holding something behind his back why the hell are you so smug I asked grumbling like the old man I was no reason he replied moving in front of me at that moment Kelly came out from behind the bar holding a small cake with a lit candle on top the band started playing the damn song I hate them when they finished they looked at me expectantly oh as James would probably say Hakuna Matata like a dummy I blew out the candle naturally my wish remained a secret thanks everyone it means a lot to this old man I managed to say before my throat caught happy birthday Howard James said handing me a present it was the very thing I had been looking for but had such a hard time finding the box was very matte black 
with an embossed logo and the number 50. On the front it was a 50-year-old Glen. Fit Whiskey Rare. Collection the cost of the bottle was. Almost. $40,000 you did it you found it. Incredulously I asked yes I had to. Resort to a few favors but I found her. James replied thank you I don't care how. You did it but thank you my friend thank. You. All I looked around at my group of. Friends all of them smiling at me and. Felt a peace I hadn't known in a very. Long time I was with my family we were. Enjoying a small cake joking around. While we ate seriously there's no way we. Could have put up as many candles as we. Needed to cover your age Sean. Exclaimed screw you sir replied I using. The time honored tradition of swearing. Back sorry you're too old for me Sean. Brushed it. Off I couldn't help it I started roaring. With laughter everyone was laughing too. And it was wonderful to have such great. Friends eventually people started to. Leave we parted ways and I went back to. My boat. The night was so wonderful that I didn't. Even drink for the rest of the evening. And went to bed. Early it was the first truly restful. Sleep I've had in a long. Time next chapter Howard you have to. Tell me about your time on the water. Sean said again a few weeks later my. Friend I will tell you those stories but. Not tonight I. Replied he demanded details from me. About the time I bought my boat there. Were a few sad moments spent in exotic. Ports when I wished I had done it with. My wife's. Ex-wife maybe if I had spent more time. With her she wouldn't have lost her way. I guess I'll never understand that there. Were some happy and even fun times. Though those were the stories I'm sure. He wanted to. Here I guess I can tell you one I. Surrendered he just smiled raised his. Glass and saluted me that Saturday night. I felt like I had something to share. With him you see after about six months of. Traveling I stopped in Rio de Janeiro. It's one of the most exciting places. I've ever. Been never been Sean replied his look. Spoke volumes as if to say do I really. Look like I can afford a trip to. Rio sorry I just remember it like it was. Just yesterday there was some magic. There for me I felt the same way here in. Hawaii it's the main reason I decided to. Stay here. Forever so you're staying in Rio asked. Sean yeah yeah Rio was a beautiful city. But the truly wonderful thing I found. There was Teresa she was able to renew. My faith in. Humanity I smiled as I remembered her. Face Teresa if she was so special why. Isn't she. Here she told me she had too much love. For one life she was very frank about. Herself there wasn't a dishonest bone in. Her body basically she was telling me. She didn't want to settle down. Was amazing and within a week I felt. Like I had known her forever I felt. Invigorated but realized I had to leave. Rio before I got too attached to. Her wow was all he said sipping his beer. Just then James and Tanya appeared. Laughing about something on the way to. The bar they sat down and we all greeted. Each other another great day and man. James joke joke James. Joke yeah another day in paradise. James turned to Tanya seriously aren't. You upset that you didn't get cast in. This. Roll no not at all if anything right now. I'm even more glad I didn't take it she. Replied what are you two talking about? About that movie you mentioned asked. Sean yeah it was the movie back country. We watched it last night and holy I. Felt sorry for the heroine Missy but her. Boyfriend was an idiot I was yelling at. The screen the whole time Tanya said she. Did too James added with a smile but. Yeah I sympathized with her so she did a. 
Great job with her part the guy on the other hand got the worst of it mostly I just didn't want to do it now I'm happily doing voiceovers and more family stuff Tanya replied whereas he shouted someone behind us nearly knocking me off my stool in surprise were who Kelly asked from behind the bar Howard Denton shouted an angry female voice Again, okay, cool, and lady asked Kelly, I'm right here, I replied, turning around time. Had stopped, this couldn't be happening. Why was she here, Clarissa, gasped I. Confused. Papa, she practically spat out her voice. Full of venom, I blinked, not knowing what to do. Or say, I know my mouth was open like everyone else in the bar, I had to say. Something, what are you doing here, did. Something happened I honored your wish to. Never speak to you again, I finally found. My voice, it's been killing me all these years, but I never tried to contact you. After your letter, she stared at me like I had horns. Growing out of my head, what about she? She shouted, pointing at Tanya as if time had stopped it finally. Came to Tanya, Mom, what are you doing? Here, why did you just call Howard Dad? All eyes turned to. Me, I guess I owe you an explanation. How Clarissa continued to stare at me. Angrily and only nodded once I looked. Around at all my friends and finally. Stopped my gaze on Tanya, it was time to. Come. Clean Tanya came to me, but only because. I was trying to help her financially, eh? Few years ago, I helped fund a project. She was working on, and she came to me to thank me. I tried so hard to stay out of your lives, but I just couldn't sit back and do nothing. You were still my little girl. You hurt me more than I could have ever imagined. Clarissa accused tears welling up in her eyes. I lowered my head. In shame, I know I still miss her, you. No, she was too good for me, I replied. I'll go to my grave regretting the pain. I caused your mother and... You there was silence until James. Coughed, I'm sorry, Howard, it's my fault. She's here, I had no idea she was Tanya's. Mother, I tracked her down and sent her a... Letter about you, I tried to help you. After you told us about her at your... Birthday. Party mom, this is the guy I told you. About that's James Tanya. Said Clarissa, turn to James the guy. You said you were in love with honey. He's my age, she exclaimed, I know he he. Has a daughter who is almost my age, I. Don't care and I hope you realize how. Important he is to me, I felt like I was. In the twilight zone, this was the. Strangest situation I'd ever found. Myself and aside from maybe when Ellen walked in on Candace and me, I came back to the present and looked at my daughter. My God, she was beautiful. So Clarissa began, you are so beautiful. You remind me so much of your mother, I need to say, but tears started running down my cheeks. All the anger left and Clarissa drained away. She sat down at the table next to us with a sad and defeated look her eyes were moist two I looked around and didn't see any dry eyes suckers I hate them all Clarissa I never stopped wanting to be a part of your life I watched you but I never interfered I was at your college graduation after you went back to school being a young mother wasn't easy but you did a great job I was so proud of you and Tanya was little I tried to attend some of her activities too when she was eight years old I hid in the back room during her dance recital when you were elected mayor of your hometown I kept a newspaper clipping with a picture taken during your speech I also saw all the movies Tanya was in how could I not she's my granddaughter I stopped unable to Continue, I cried, I cried like a little baby, and there was nothing I could do to 
Stop! Then I felt arms wrap around me and squeeze me tightly when I calmed down a little and opened my eyes. All my friends were already snorting and Tanya released me from her bee. Hug, I always wondered why you were interested in my career back then. She said, I'm so glad you're my grandfather. I hugged her tightly before we let go of each other. Tanya looked at her mother and waved her hand. ISA looked apprehensively but then gave in and joined our hug. I missed you, Daddy. She wailed, becoming like my little girl. Again, that opened the floodgates in both of us again. I'm so sorry, I said. I'll never forgive myself. Never I've lost two of the most important things in the world to me and I have no one to blame. But myself next chapter it hurt too much for me to realize that you lost your mom too you weren't the one who gave her the cancer that killed her i realized that now clarissa said grimly i loved your mom very much but i loved you too my heart tore out of my chest the day i read your letter i knew you were angry but the fact that i contributed to all that pain i said it and my voice trailed off everyone went home and i offered her a cabin on my yacht for the night as we approached the yacht she noticed the name painted on the stern purgatory she asked the story of my life i now that i told you i haven't forgiven myself right this time she just nodded we boarded and sat in the living room for a while sipping our nightcaps Clarissa sat there looking at me what I asked I just can't believe everything that's happened when I was younger I thought you and mom looked like a prince and princess when I got older I still thought you two were stupidly in love with each other why dad why did you do that she asked there's no easy answer to that question I've asked myself that question a thousand times over the past few decades was it or did your mom do something wrong i assure you your mom had nothing to do with it i think that's what hurt us both the most she was completely innocent the first became selfish and forgot why i loved her so much i think i took it for granted that she would always be there for me why didn't you try to do everything you could to get her into treatment she asked again with anguish in her quiet voice i did everything i could think of i begged her i tried to bribe her by offering to leave i offered her to get back at me with another man i even begged her to see a grief counselor but she had already lost her desire it broke me you know two years after after I got married, I tried to rebuild a relationship with you, Aaron. That's my husband talked me into trying. And he said it wasn't good for me to keep the negativity inside, so I came home you. Had moved out by then and no one around. Here knew where you'd gone, I had no idea. After I sold everything I moved here, I kept an eye on what you were doing, but I didn't follow you or anything I never knew your last letter really hurt me but I respected your wishes we sat in silence for a while mulling over the events of the day finally she got up and announcing that she was tired went to bed the next day we spent almost eight hours reconnecting she told me about her husband and we talked about Tanya I told her about my marriage to Catherine and how it ended finally we talked about the future and staying in touch with each other after dinner she packed up her things for an early morning flight home we enjoyed dinner and were joined by James and Tanya it really did feel like a family the next morning was emotional for everyone James kissed Tanya goodbye as she was flying to Australia to shoot a family movie he was going to join her in. 
A week, but such a long separation always makes them especially sentimental. Wimpy Clarissa wept as she said goodbye to both Tanya and me be sure to call me. When land I said now that she was back in my life I didn't want it to ever end. I will lie. Promise I have to visit your family for the holidays this year I said I'd love to buy daddy she said and we hugged one. Last time my life was far from perfect but I was feeling pretty good that night as I prepared for bed I quietly prayed to Ellen I could only hope she heard me thank you for being my wife I hope you are proud of the daughter you helped raise and one day I hope you will forgive me I love you I just hoped I could forgive myself the end thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it so Subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.